Stay tuned for The Joan Quinn Profiles. As an editor for Andy Warhol's interview, the Los Angeles Herald Examiner, LA Style, and Detour Magazines, Joan covered the social set, the Hollywood hotshots, the international art scene, the mysteries of food, the excitement of travel, and the fabulous world of fashion. Joan continues to find creative people on the cutting edge who make things happen. Here's Joan Agajanian Quinn. Hi, I'm Joan Quinn, and welcome to the Joan Quinn Profiles. Waiting to be profiled is architect Jesus Fondevilla and actress Elizabeth Barrage. Jesus Fondevilla was born in Spain and raised in Argentina. He earned a master's degree from the University of Buenos Aires. Did you always want to be an architect? Absolutely. Absolutely. Since day one in, in high school, I wanted to be an architect. Oh, not before that. You weren't building blocks, were yeah, you? Yeah, <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> um, what happened when you went to college? Did you still I, pursue uh, your... Uh, when I went to college, uh, it's a funny uh, situation. My brother was um, wanted to be an architect, and mm -hmm. he took some courses in uh, in interior design. And I, the minute that I saw him uh, doing these drawings, I said, "That's my career." Uh -huh. So I went to uh, then I went to college and pursued the uh, the architectural uh, career. Did you have any artistic background? Not necessarily. I had uh, uh, more aesthetics uh, oh. uh, background and how to set colors and shape of uh, things and stuff like that. Well, when after you got out of, of uh, the university in Buenos Aires, what did you do? Did you came out with an architecture degree? Right. And then did you work there? I worked there while uh, the last two years I worked in Buenos Aires for an architectural firm uh, in Buenos Aires. Um, we did uh, uh, architectural design and graphic design both, which was a oh. very interesting experience for me. And uh, at the same time, I took a vacation to and came and visited my brother here. That oh, your brother he was, was in California? He was in California, leaving for five years at that time. And since I came here, I decided, well, I will pursue, I will uh, do my career, I will work in, in California, specifically in Los Angeles. Did you find similarities between Argentina and the uh, United States? N I no. should, shouldn't say, I should say actually small city and small city more. Uh, no, uh, Buenos Aires is a very cosmopolitan city, similar to New York. I want to get out of that uh, the buildings being close together, the streets being small and right next to high-rise buildings. Los Angeles gave me the fantastic impression that uh, it's a wide open boulevards, very clean buildings, um, and the, how dynamic, how uh, city of, of the future is Los Angeles. Did you have to change your lifestyle a lot? Uh, a bit, yeah. yeah you, you were yeah. still pretty young though right. when you came. That's right. so Maybe yes. you hadn't quite gotten into what was happening in, in yeah, Argentina. Yeah, um, of course, in, in, in Buenos Aires, the day-to-day the -day life is slightly different uh, than in Los Angeles. Um, and at that time, I just finished uh, my uh, uh, career in there, so uh, I wasn't quite um, uh, um, uh, working uh, for for a living yet uh, uh, had my family around uh, when, when I came yeah. to United States I had to work for a living and uh, and uh, so it was a quite a bit of adjustment and also um, the the way that you maneuver through the city and north and south you in, didn't have to which deal we with didn't that. have to deal with that in Buenos Aires did you get a job right away I got a job right away in fact uh, uh, an interesting um, anecdote, um, I interviewed in a couple of uh, uh, large companies at that time and I was quite ready to get a job in one of these companies and um, I interviewed in a very small one and a, a, um, an architect there said, why don't we, the two of us, open a uh, small office? So we did. 
While you uh, were interviewing one of the one I was of the interviewing <laughs> and one of the employees. Yes. <laughs> we start talking and let's say let's talk a little more. Maybe we can open a so small you office. Hit it off. And in fact, we opened the office. Uh, we did very well. And in fact, later on, we hire the architect in the office where I was interviewing to work for us. How great. So that was a very interesting and great help from uh, Peter Fulton. He was this great architect that helped me out quite a bit. So you started in a small situation mm -hmm. and, and then you went to Leo A. Daly, which has, I don't know, 15 offices or in different parts of the world. Exactly. A dozen offices. It started in 1915. So it meant you had to carry on this great tradition of a architecture firm. How heavy was that for you to get into it? Uh, it was quite uh, heavy. Uh, after I had my own office years ago, and then I went and worked for a couple other medium-sized architects, uh. I got <laughs> to a point that I needed uh, bigger challenges. And the best thing that happened to me is I got a call from Leo Edeli's office to be the, the the leader of the office in Los Angeles and uh, oh. that was quite a challenge. Uh, an international office with more than 20 um, offices, so branches all throughout the world, uh, in Hong Kong and Madrid. Uh, I know, um, all over. All over. And so the work was not only local in Los Angeles, in California, it was nationwide and worldwide. How do they keep track of all those offices? I just never can understand. Of course, they're building in their own areas, probably. Uh, some of, uh, some of uh, the work is in the same area. Some of the work is a collaboration between offices, uh, oh, that's and that's, that's uh, stressed all the time. Uh, uh, we try to put the best talents of each one of the offices uh, to serve as a client. When you go to take over a big firm like that, or a big office in, say, Los Angeles, do you give up your creative talents to just work with the numbers then? Oh, not at all. <laughs> not <No>? at all. <laughs> The creative talents are, are used in a different focus, a different direction. Uh -huh. uh, it's a marketing uh, focus. Is how to put together a, uh, a response to, uh, to a proposal, uh, how to use the image to communicate with the client uh, uh, that we are the best firm uh, uh -huh. for that particular project. So the talents keep uh, being used continuously, Changing. but it's a different focus. You're not on the drawing board anymore. I'm not on the drawing board. I'm Do you very, miss that? Um, no, because, not really. And, and I don't miss it because I'm very much in touch with each one of the projects in a different level. Uh, I see. And I'm in touch with the clients. So I, um, uh, no, I, I utilize my, my energy, but in different areas. It's probably difficult because sometimes architects are very quiet. They just do their own uh, work mm -hmm. and sometimes you have to have a spokesman so maybe someone mm -hmm. like you who can talk about a project exactly. can go out exactly. and interface with the with the yeah. client and talking about the client what I mean you do big institutional buildings I mean you're not doing any little houses you're doing schools <laughs> and banks and oil refineries and many, many things. Airports. Airports. Tell us what some of those things are. We have some fantastic projects right now on the boards. Uh, we are uh, finishing up the uh, um, uh, renovation, total renovation of the Tom Bradley Terminal at uh, oh, LAX. Oh. That's a, just a, uh, a great project, a very big project. Uh, we started that project a couple of years ago. And now it has uh, transformed into uh, security also implementation. That, so you must have come up time. with different uh, needs once you had that exactly. started. And since 9-11, yeah. that brought different exactly. uh, needs into the project. Yeah, the program started with strictly ex uh, exterior and interior renovation. Now it turned into uh. security implementation, making sure that uh, there, in, there is no explosives, etc. security for the airport, for the people, for, for the airplanes. Uh, very, very uh, challenging project in, at LAX. This, this is? That is a project that is under construction now. It's at uh, Denver International oh. Airport. Oh. 
And this is a canopy almost 400 feet long by 150 feet wide. And it is a fantastic uh, um, design with, um, with a fabric that uh, takes from the design of the main airport the because same it was, type of fabric. It was a very interesting airport to exactly. begin with. Exactly. And is this the building? That is that is the uh, building. This is a better view that of it, a, I think. That is the building. So this really f kind of follows suit, but it's two different architectural... It's, it's two different uh, uh, architects. And um, kind of uh, takes the theme from the... Who was the first one? I forgot. Um, you know, you got me there. I okay, don't remember. Okay, I forgot too. That's terrible. Um, we, um, we also have uh, a uh, very interesting and challenging project for the Los Angeles Zoo. Yeah, I want to talk about that because we have a maquette of it and we have uh, this behind me must be the beginning of how you approached the exactly. reptile house. Correct. That is the beginning, taking the shape, shape of uh, the animals in the, in the wild and, and transferring that to the shape of the building that is going to house the animals. Like somebody said, there is no uh, 90 degree angles in, oh, it's in just nature. A, it's, so, oh, right. so the building uh, is, 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 takes exactly the shape, uh, the contours of uh, what it could be of a reptile. Worms, or a, the worms, or the I worms, love. Or uh, <laughs> many, many animals and, and uh, in nature, yeah. It looks fabulous. And um, I think that maquette that we do have, this is more of a kind of an abstract um, view of it, but it shows how you've set them out in different little pods or different little areas. Exactly. This is a, um, again, this is the building that will house the exhibits for the reptiles. And uh, the build, that particular image uh, is, is uh, we open the roof, ah, it has see. no roof, I see. Uh, and, uh, and you see the, each one of the volumes where the different reptiles will be housed. Uh, and it's a very ergonomic type of environment, uh, not only for the, uh, for the animals, oh, but right. also for the uh, visitors, for the guests. So you work with the zoo personnel? We work with the zoo so that uh, they tell curators, you they, yeah. and they told us how the animals live, how, the, how they take care of the animals, what is the maintenance needed, etc. And then this is a picture of the, probably the finished product, which looks like a right. snail back, kind of. That's correct. And uh, that, it, that will be one of the entrance to the reptile house. It is a uh, perspective done in the computer and superimposed onto a natural setting. What's the finish on the outside? The finish is titanium, which oh, is a is. metal... Um, which it will be green and, and greenish and, and yellow, like the scales of, of so the it reptiles. Yeah, it'll be exactly. overlapping. Oh, that's fabulous. Uh, and I know one thing your firm is very, very um, philanthropic. It's such a big firm. It's a, such a big architectural office. And they do do a lot of philanthropy in the city. Mm -hmm. And I know you're involved in a lot um, of it. For the last uh, almost 10 years, I've been part of the, first of all, a big brother for the Big Brothers Big Sisters organization, and second, a board member of the board of directors of Big Brothers Big Sisters. I um, started a, a, a program, which we call it a business uh, mentorship program, oh. where we, for a period of time during the summer, the kids come to an office, in this case an architectural office, and they learn how to do the architectural business, from working in the computers to uh, doing drawings by hand to doing a presentation. And we always tie the program to a current client. Oh, that's great. So then great. The end, at the end of the program, after the eight or ten weeks, they actually present the product, the, the building or the, the yeah. sketches to a client and we and have a graduation. Oh, that's wonderful. Day. And then they can see it as the building takes place. They're growing up exactly. and they see the bu building happening. Exactly. Jay, it was so great to have you with us today. 
Thank you Thank very you. much for being with us and explaining all this kind of architectural things that's going on in the city of Los Angeles. And thank you for watching. Don't go away. We'll be back with actress Elizabeth Barrage. Hi, welcome back. I'm Joan Quinn, and I'm with actress Elizabeth Barrage, who was born and raised in New York. Her stage roots in the theater took hold in New York, Los Angeles, and London. Beth's worked in TV with the requisite soap opera, which was another <laughs> world of Texas, and she's appeared in film. But it seems that you, your big push was acting on the stage. That's right. I didn't um, act professionally on the stage till after Amadeus, and after is that right? That's right. But then, when that, when that but came no, out, wait. Let's go back a little further. Your big push was on the stage. When did you get pushed into that stage appearance? Um, in the fifth grade. <laughs> going back. Oh, you know, I can't fool you. Well, in in school, yeah. So I mean, the you decided to be an actor early, early on. Early, early on, yeah. Before I knew better. And who were you? Uh, in fifth grade, I was Linus. I was the first Linus with breasts, probably. <laughs> um, I was Linus, and I, oh, we had a great school system. We did a lot of Amer did Americanic did High they? School. Yeah, they did tons of theater. And Snoopy? I was Snoo I wasn't Snoopy. Oh, you weren't Snoopy. No, I never oh, got to play Snoopy. 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 Someday. Oh, I got it. Um, yeah, but I got to play Linus in the in It's a Good Man, Charlie Brown is the name of the play. But that was pretty good in the fifth grade. Yeah, it was you good. You know, I mean, and then I, I then acting took hold. It seems. Oh, it was bef it was before then even. Did you study um, acting? Um, Other than I in studied, high school. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, during high school, I went to the um, I went into the city and studied at the Strasbourg Institute, and I got into the I got into Lee's class. Oh. Um, and was actually in his wife's class and then Anna and then and then I got accepted into Lee's class and then he died. Oh, you didn't so get to take any classes? Hold against him for yeah. But I got to observe them, which was interesting for a little kid. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. So but I mean to act to a pay, in terms of a paid job, I didn't act in the theater until after the the movie came out and I had a lot of options before it came out and and I had uh, gotten these new agents, and they were like, well, what would you like to do? Let's um, start with yeah. the movie, then, if that's okay. what we're going to talk that's about. Fine. Talk about Amadeus. You, uh, tell us a little bit about it and what, how you got the role and what well, the role was. I, Meg Tilly had the part. They had done months and months and months of casting and then pre-production and costuming and rehearsing. It was and all in Los Angeles, or were you in New York then? This was in New York. It was in New York. Um, yeah. And she broke her foot the day before they started filming her part. Uh, were you around? No, that was in, <laughs> they were in Czechoslovakia. Oh, okay. So it was just interesting checking. Was that they wouldn't, they refused to see any of the actors that they had already seen. Um, um. So the casting director was racking her, she was calling up uh, uh, acting teachers, and at that time my acting teacher, Warren Robertson, in New York, um, said you should see this woman and she knew me and she said well she's too strange and introverted to play you know <laughs> this happy-go-lucky well but you know this wife who's who's not that way um, but she was very more efficient young and Wasn't she's very she? young well it turns out Milos wanted a kind of uh, raw um, quality that he thought ultimately obviously I was right for but what happened was they flew back from Czechoslovakia um, Milos and and um, the producer, Saul. Milos. Milos Foreman. Who's the uh, director, who's right? Who's the director. And Saul Zanz, who's the producer, and Tom Hulse, who's, who's you know who he is. <laughs> he was your husband. <laughs> That's right. They flew back and saw these women. And I was one of the women and left thinking, I I've made an, an idiot of myself. I, I was so nervous I couldn't speak. And I thought, how am I going to be able to speak? be an actress if I can't even speak. You've got to be able to speak. I mean, forget the other things that go Did along Did you have to read? 
I did read. Um, Yes, it's funny. I don't remember actually the act. I remember more the meeting. Of the, like them. they and were feeling just <laughs> like like um, right. this bizarre creature with no skin, and, oh. and 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 I would have to work on getting skin and forget. I never. It never occurred to me that I was going to get a call saying, which I did, saying they want you to go to Czechoslovakia to test for the movie, like in three days. So there was suddenly a mad dash to get um, passports together and all that and pack and. I didn't know if I'd be staying for six months or going for, and <laughs> that's a great. This is a great story. Well, it gets better. I uh, the woman who I was testing against, an actor actress named Diane Franklin. Um, we met up at the airport. She was going too. She was going too. We flew over together, <laughs> and we went through everything together. They put us in our wigs together. They <laughs> did the whole thing. And meanwhile, they're shooting the movie. So uh, on the lunch break, they would come in and do these screen tests, and it was very hard to to watch the sets and the whole um, the the to, to 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 realize that this thing was you know going to go on without you, which I thought it was. Yeah. Um, but and, weren't you um, thinking this is a good experience anyway, or were you just so scared to death? Well, I was lucky to get a trip to Prague. I yeah. thought and <laughs> that's what I it's wanted. Free did and first you? class, and <laughs> but it, it, I was so certain I wouldn't, and I wouldn't get it. And after every, <laughs> uh, it turns out that they kept us there doing this for a week. Oh, they wow. couldn't make up their minds. And I later heard that that they had thought they wanted me, but they thought maybe this other girl. And then once we were both over there, they they she did better than I. Whatever, I heard that story years later. Um, so they couldn't decide. So it got into a routine where we'd be like every day. <laughs> <laughs> leave the hotel. We'd leave the hotel and we'd get put in our things and we'd do our little scenes. And then after I'd say, we'd have dinner together, Diane and I. And so I'd you, say, were you good friends by this time? We, we developed a friendship. <laughs> and I would say, oh, so horrible. And this, I can't. And she'd say, oh, I'm sure you were great. And you look so pretty in that wig. She was so Don't nice. be silly. <laughs> So a week into this, we're finally, um, it's the day off of the crew, and we're watching One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, Milos' movie, and, and of course I'm thinking, oh, to, to work with this guy would be, but it's not going to happen, so don't. And at that moment, we saw them walking down the hallway, and I thought, well, this is it. So try and be gracious about it and thank mm -hmm. them for everything and the chance to see Prague and all that. <laughs> and... And Milos sat us down and he said, you know, essentially, you both have the part. I would love to cast you both. Um, but it comes down to the <laughs> problem. One of you is too pretty to play, uh, to play Constanza. So, Elizabeth, we're, we're going to give oh, you the part. Oh, nice. that was nice. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my so gosh. I was like, is this good? I don't or know is this if I got the... <laughs> And she was great. She jumped up. and was like, so wonderful about it. And like I, the beauty and I queen, right? The beauty queen, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and um, and then we started shooting the pretty much the next day. So you had a big role. I had a big role, and I wasn't <laughs> wasn't wasn't all that prepared uh, in any way, you know, for the whole thing as a as a little person or as a as an actor. As a as a uh, I hadn't done any research about this woman, did which this, Milos liked. He did didn't the, want any um, of that. Did this whole thing just throw you into the limelight? I mean, here you were a big star actually with a huge film that won so many awards. Well you know what it did? It made me realize that um, when I got home that what I needed to do was theater. It's just I didn't want to, uh, a lot oh. of movie stuff came up um, especially b before the movie came out and there was all this um, I just I, I felt like um, uh, there was a lot I, I wanted to, to go out and learn before I was ever in that situation so you, again. So that's why you were, were so rooted in theater. Yeah, then. Uh, and um. well, I was I was fortunate because New York, the New York theater world is very hard to break into, and so I had this fancy credit, uh -huh. and was seen for this this play, a Harry Condolian play. I don't know if you're familiar with him, and he's a New York playwright who's not alive anymore, but he's a wonderful, he's a wonderful playwright and. Um, play called The Vampires, and I got the part of a 14-year-old crazy uh, heroin addict, and that just started um. my theater, and that's uh, that's pretty much what I did for 10 years till I did a, a, a John Chanley movie, um, Five Corners, because I had worked on his stuff in the oh, theater. So and, then. 
And, and that was says, great. So it was like, all this tie then, theater, movie, theater, movie. Yeah. And we got to get to theater before yeah. our time runs out. Yeah. Because uh, the reason I saw you in Betty Bidette, uh, which is a play at the McCadden Theater written by Jacqueline Wright. The wonderful Jacqueline Wright. Yes. And your part is a big part. And you play this kind of like introverted, <laughs> feeling sorry for yourself kind of role. Yeah. I play a rape victim. But I think, I think what's really wonderful about this play is that, um, I mean, why I wanted to be part of it and why I hope, I think that a lot of people should see it. Um, it's not a play about rape. It's not a play about, it's a, it's a, it's, it's a play that's more like a, a dream or a poem than a, some sort of a, um, a realistic uh, uh, um, linear story about a, a so it works on a lot of levels, and it addresses a lot of the things we all, everything it, that it's involved it in. It does being, address you know. a lot of issues, uh, social issues, but in a kind of comic book way, because right. the person who comes to visit you is, um, what, Shazam, is a, a Well, she's a, character. a wonderful superhero that... A superhero, right. That is, um, is, is um, if, a super, if the def definition of superhero is everything we're not... Um, then, then the play, this play is truer than most of the yeah. other superheroes we see because this character is selfish and <laughs> sexy and sex and wants to have a good time in addition to having to go save people. Which and is like, oh, uh, do I have to do that? Yeah. Yeah. Which is, do I have to save these and people? And she's so brilliant in this part. And it's so, um, and, and in some ways it's, it's, it's the way this little girl is helped out, outside of herself. Um, she's given the strength to um, to come to terms with what this thing that ha that she's the, her fears and the darkness in the world that have made her afraid to go outside of herself. Your character, my character, is, and that, yeah. That the story, this other story that's going on at the same time that comes into her world is the thing that helps her come out of it. And I think that's an important story because it's not only about an individual person and the and, a, and an individual journey, but it's about m the journey of of our culture at the moment. I think we could all use a little understanding for the things that we don't, that we're afraid of and that, and that scare right. us, but that ultimately we need to, to, cut, to get into a relationship with and understand so that so, we can heal. So, that is the healing. That's the healing. And that's <laughs> it. And it's called Buddy Bidette. And uh, you're one of the stars. There's so many people in that play. A lot play. of people in it. A lot of people. A lot of and, wonderful people. And our time is up. I wanted to also say you were a uh, regular on the John Laura Kett show mm -hmm. and the powers that be. So if you see any reruns, we see Elizabeth Barrage. That's and, right. And then you watch the Joan Quinn profiles and you see Elizabeth Barrage again. <laughs> so thanks for being with us. Thank you for having me. <laughs> thanks. And keep riding to 777 South Figueroa, 44th floor, Los Angeles, 917. We'll see you next time on the Joan Quinn profiles.